What was missing? I'm not condemning the video. I just want you to know there's something missing. What is it? <laughs> nope, it was there. Stable was there. Something that you have seen on every other slide up until this point. Angels? Nope, angels were there. They were singing. Oh. Hmm? They were singing. Mm, yeah, we didn't get the whole choir of them, but... There was one angel we saw. <clears throat> Give you one last shot. There were no words. There was absolutely no words in this video whatsoever. Not spoken, not read, not at all. And yeah, it's true, they may not have needed them, but here's the point. Where does that message of the gospel truly need to come from the words you know again i'm not condemning the video but that's the essence of the gospel and so i want you to look at the old testament reading again and notice in the first verse what is repeated there's two different things that are repeated and that means they're really important so what are those two different things that are repeated what words Good news. The good news is the gospel. The good news is the message about Jesus Christ. We can say the gospel is referring to the four gospels, but the good news is specific, specifically about Jesus, specifically about his coming, specifically about his life, suffering, death, resurrection, specifically about his gift of salvation to us. That's the good news. The good news is that God has fulfilled his prophecies and that he has brought his son to earth and that he has given us the gift of salvation. So that is important. What else is repeated? What does that word really mean? I had to look it up. Because there's two different meanings. First is, put it in print, okay? To produce and release for distribution in a printed form. But the second is what? An announcement, to make known openly and publicly. And what an important message this is to make known openly and publicly. I'm going to start with the second meeting. Come back to the first. So when we see the first verse here, verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet who brings the good news. This good news is being brought openly. This good news is being brought publicly. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. And it starts all the way back to Genesis. It goes all the way through Malachi. And now for us, it goes from Matthew to Revelation. All of the messages within those books of the Bible, within those published books of the Bible, speak good news to us good news that we have a savior good news he came into the world good news that he suffered and died for us good news that he took away our sins good news that we receive forgiveness good news that we have everlasting life in him good news and more good news and the purpose of that good news is to do three things to bring us hope to bring us joy and to bring us peace and as it does those three things in our lives, we are given the blessing of that good news. Because after all, whichever, whatever good news would ever depress us, would ever make us feel anxiety, would ever make us feel sadness, would ever make us feel downtrodden, good news isn't designed for that. It's good news. It's bringing us the very gifts that God has for his people, specifically, notice where it says publish the second time. 
who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. That good news needs to be made known, needs to be spoken of, proclaimed openly and publicly. But what about the first one? The first meaning again was what? To produce and release for distribution in printed form. I want you to think how many faithful people throughout history have brought to us the opportunity to have a Bible to look at. Can you fathom it? Because until Gutenberg's printing press, every other copy was what? Hand copy, handwritten, from the original right down to the last hand copied one before Gutenberg's printing press. That's all they had, which meant monks or priests or other people sitting in a room with one copy of the Bible and paper on the other side and copying page after page after page. Copies found all over the world. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the Qumran discoveries, the beautiful words of the message of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament and in the New, produced and released for distribution. And it grew with Gutenberg's press, and it went on from there. But now what do we have? I never thought in my wildest dreams when I started my ministry in 1990 that I would reach places in the world that we are able to reach. South America, Central America, Asian countries, Middle Eastern countries. I'm not just talking about the ones that exist. I'm talking about the ones that have viewed messages from this church. These are places where we publish. But I'm not doing the publishing. Jeff is. Ben is. The guys putting it on the internet. They're the ones doing the publishing. They're the ones that are making it open, known openly and publicly. They're the ones that are putting it out there. And I don't know how many people I've ever had say to me these words. I watched you online. And it blows my mind. We are able, with that message, to bring good news. To bring the good news of Jesus Christ. To make him known openly and publicly all over the planet through these mediums and to release for distribution that important and powerful message. So when we go back to the Old Testament, we see what an important and blessed opportunity we have been given to make known the gifts about Jesus Christ. In verse 8, the voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing. Is there any other event that has inspired so many songs and so many hymns and so many carols as the event of our Savior's birth? Why is it this time of the year we have seemingly endless volumes of hymns, songs, carols, all of that? all of that to celebrate to celebrate the birth of a savior to celebrate god's son to celebrate okay we're taking hands name a favorite hymn favorite christmas hymn or carol silent night mary did you know mary did you know we had tears at that one last night 
What child is this? Who he's just saying. Well, that's not really in line with what I'm talking about. Way in the manger. Hark the glad sound. Joy to the world. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O little town of Bethlehem. All beautiful hymns. All meant to celebrate a Savior's birth. All meant for our, the purpose of proclaiming the good news in the form of song. You know, last night as we had Christmas carols in our service, there was more carols and more words from those songs and hymns than in my message. And I pray that today we get as many hymns and songs than in my message, because this is our opportunity to proclaim, to respond to God for the gift received, to respond to God for the love shown, respond to God for the salvation he has put uh, upon us and given to us. But can we only do that with our voices? Because when we go back to the beginning, how beautiful upon the mountains are the... So we have feet and voices. So if you don't have a voice and you don't have feet, you can't share Jesus with anybody. True or false? False. False. Because those aren't the only ways we can share it. Not only do we share it with our voices, not only do we share it by going other places, but can we share it with our hands? Absolutely. Can we share it with our hearts? Can we share it on wheels? Can we share it over the internet? Can we share it through letters and cards? all different ways that we can share that good news, that we can publish that good news, that we can make known that good news, the good news of our salvation, not only in song and in singing, but also in words and in voices and in hands and in feet and in hearts and in minds, all of those ways. Go back to verse 9. And as we hear that verse 9, we sing, yes, but we can sing also with hands. Have you ever watched anybody do sign language? Does it look like singing to you? I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but it does to me. As they move their hands, as they tell the story with their hands and speak words and, and letters with their hands, I think it's a beautiful thing to watch, not only because of what they're doing, but knowing it's conveying a message. A message in so many ways that can bring hope to those without it. Next verse. What do you think when you see this? Say it again. Getting ready to work or getting ready to fight. The gloves are off. Thank you very much. And as we hear that, isn't that what God came to do in Christ? Did Jesus come into the world to just speak, to just perform miracles? Why did he come? Why did Jesus come? Right. How? Defeat Satan. He had to defeat Satan. It was a battle. And so when we look at the cross, we can't just see an execution. We must see a battle. We must see an action that is doing fight and, con and defense and absolute war against the devil himself. The very first prophecy. God makes it to the serpent in the garden. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Sounds like a battle to me. In a battle where the Lord rolls up his sleeves and has at it, 
and he brings us victory. The victory that is spoken again at the very last part here. Before the eyes of all nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The salvation that he won by defeating the devil. The salvation that he won by rising from the grave. The salvation that he won and gives us as he comes to do battle on our behalf. To do war in our place. And to give us those three very important things I said earlier. Remember the word? Hope, joy, peace. Because we have a God who has given us salvation. So how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? The good news is Jesus himself. In his name. Grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be abide with us all. Amen.